hello. JJ. Hi again. What's up, my man? Thank you so much for joining me on this conversation. Mm. I feel like we've spoken over the years, you know, with all the things that we've created, I've created with you and for you. And I just love your perspective that you have, not just on your industry, but on the world as a whole. And I was hoping mm -hmm. today that we could just kind of, you know, just pull back the curtain a bit on some of the things that goes on on you know, with JFJ, um, your insights onto the industry and all that. So thank you again for, for joining, man. My pleasure. You know, people know you as an artist, you know, they know you as a singer, a songwriter, but how do you personally describe what you do? I'd like to see myself more as a storyteller. Singing, the music, it's, it's the craft. It's the medium that you speak your stories, you share your life. There are many ways to actually get the real stories out there. Music is the way that works best for me, at least for the past 18 years. But throughout these years, I have been trying to use other ways as well. But essentially, I feel it's about storytelling. It's about sharing what's real. For me, it's, it's all it's just connected. Yeah. Just a link to that question. Like, What made you fall in love with this idea of storytelling? I think it's just every person's urge to be known, to be understood. I think that's very innate in every human being. It started from there. And even up to today, when there's like a relationship through a piece of work or a song or, you know, a piece of art, the feeling of someone just right there with you, that is something that I feel drives me to do everything that I've been doing. That human connection, that's something yeah. that is so precious to me. Yeah. We talk about design and we talk about different things like fulfilling practical needs, but I feel mm. like of all things, music is that thing that moves people so emotionally. Maybe if you just uh, tell us a bit about what's it like to kind of create those things, you know, where do you have to go in your mind and your heart to kind of get to those points? In every piece of work that I've done, whatever that has been taken in by, by the listener, it's, it's actually a little part of what has been really transparent and the things in life that I've been through, the feelings that I've experienced, you know, the, the super happy moments and, and even the, the super dark moments, those are the things that I feel I've tried to put in a song, not, not just a song, but in everything that I, I, I create, I want to capture those real moments and those real emotions. And I think that's, that, that makes the difference when you're doing it out of like, you're trying to write a, a diary. That's how I see my music. That's how I see my songwriting. So it's not, it's not like, oh, I'm doing this because I want a lot of people to listen to it. I want to make a lot of sales from the songs. It's really not about, never about that, even until today. It, it's always about the yearning to, to be heard, you know? And then if I don't put it into a song, it, it's going to be inside me for, for forever. Yeah. Sometimes when that emotion is not a, a good thing, you know, especially when it's not a good thing, uh, you, you keep it inside and, and you don't let it out. You, have no, you don't channel it somewhere. It actually eats into your soul. That's something that I, wow. I, I've been through, you know? You realize that if you don't, you don't do something about it, it will swallow you eventually and then and you lose wow. yourself yeah that's that's wow. that's pretty dark but, but i feel it i want to be very real with my music yeah and that's why every single time that i release a product or or, or an album you know it's a different story and yeah. people ask me like oh how do you keep your inspiration flowing i don't really try to keep my inspiration flowing because i just try to keep it real when you said that you know hardly any of the time is the creating driven by profit so to speak, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? The, the process and the profit almost, you try to separate that as much as possible. And what I think is beautiful about that is that what is coming out of you then is like you said, it's real and it's authentic emotion. It does come at a cost, right? What would you say is the biggest misconception that people can have about the health and the well-being of, you know, people like yourself who are creators? You're mm. very successful. You have a massive global audience. The misconception is that, okay, JJ Lin is, is just, you know, always happy. It's a very, <laughs> <laughs> or the feeling people get is like, he's always uh, pumped up. You know, he's always, it's always uh, a music video. It's always, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, what people don't see is, is the times that I've been lonely, you know, the times when I, I just need a hug. I just feel like giving up. Sometimes it can be very pressurizing, you know, in, when it comes to like being just a person especially someone like me who, who have been always talking about and singing about like, you know, strength, passion, yeah. drive, a lot of positivity in my work yeah. and yeah. in my everyday sharing. Yeah. And, and as a person, you know, even to my friends and my, my peers, you know, I've always been uh, this positive person, right? I want to help 
I want to, I want to, you know, uplift uh, spirits, you know, but, but then I choose not to show that much of my negative self or that, that low yeah. moments. Being a creator in every industry, you don't escape from the same pressures. You don't escape from the same, you know, limit limitations because we're all human i feel that a theme that i'm seeing a more and more important nowadays is this idea of well-being mm. of wellness in what you do um, not just kind of wellness in the way that you're helping people but personal wellness keeping yourself healthy as a creator through the years as i've seen you create your albums your spaces there is this theme of sanctuary right this idea of a safe place there mm. is this theme of miracles and hope in light of sanctuary, in light of miracles. You know, you know when, when we say the word wellness and well-being, you know, tell me how it's changed throughout your career. Mm -hmm. Well, I think this whole idea came about, you know, as, I, as I've been growing as a, as a person. And then I realized the importance of having a safe space for the soul. It's so much more than just mental or just emotion. As an artist, you, you, you're constantly being, being challenged with all kinds of pressure, all kinds of people. You're bearing your soul and, and you're opening yourself up to all kinds of, you know. How do you do that? You know, like I've seen you do it over and over and over all these years. You put this stuff out there and people love it. But then, there, like you said, there are people who just totally attack it, right? How do you keep bringing yourself back to like, I'm going to release another song. <laughs> I'm going <gonna, laughs> <I'm gonna, laughs> to continue to be vulnerable. Now, looking back, it's, it's not been easy. And, in, and many times you, you want to you just stop and you say, why am I doing this? You ask yourself, you know, <laughs> you know, why, why, why do I keep doing it? After a while that it's not about these people who attack you, right? Ooh. It's really not about them. It's not about anything else, but that relationship with, the, the people we've built over these years. We use Sanctuary a lot, and, and it's the name of our studio, but it's also the name of my, uh, my, my current like, world tour, my concert, because I bring that with me. You know, I have a space, a studio where we create the music that we consider you know, precious, and we want to keep it in a safe space. At the same time, we want to bring that concept forward and onto a stage where we travel and bring it to the world. We want to bring that to every city that we, we perform in. You know, even through design, through interior, even through our office. I want to instill a concept like when they come into the office, they want to have a piece of that imagination with them. You know, you know that piece of haven that they can look and aspire to go towards. You know, that's how I push myself. You know, yeah. always create like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what you're building here, mate, is I feel it's very spiritually and emotionally am ambitious. It's a very ambitious <laughs> thing you're undertaking here. I would like to know now, what do you think the future looks like when it comes to culture and wellness and creativity? Share with me some of your thoughts on that. I feel the concept of uh, having that sanctuary would apply much more to our future generation than today. Technology has already created an entirely new world from reality to a virtual space. And we, as human beings, will need sanctuary. The line gets thinner and all the more we will need to redefine sanctuary as it is you know and that's why i feel the need to create that sanctuary that safe space for people who matter i mean that's beautiful uh, i feel like it's coming coming back to why you're doing this in the first place mm -hmm. you know um, and that's a massive theme that we've been talking about why we all started doing what we do imagine a whole generation that has lost touch with a real feeling of what it means to be safe what does a love song sound like 40 years from now you know will it still carry the humanity and the emotions, you know, will we lose sight of all the beautiful, you know, French bistros or the things that, you know, make things human, right? How would coffee taste like 40 years from now? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a funny question, but I mean, it's, it's kind of, kind of interesting, right? But my question is, what would that mean for uh, interior or, you know, architecture you know, or designers? You know, like you said, what does coffee taste like? What does a coffee shop look like in the future? Um, I, I actually don't have a picture, but I, I do see there is kind of like we're in danger of, you know, moving forward with and progressing so quickly and so exponentially that mm. maybe we, we may lose the need and lose sight of the things that make us human. And, you know, like, I love this verse in the Bible. It says God made us in his image, right? So I feel that, you know, whatever we create also 
in, in a way leaves behind an image of who we truly are. Um, but my last question to you, you know, for future artists, singers, mm. people creating music and the content and product that revolve around music, if you had one message for them, like, what would you say? I would say embrace what's to come, but enjoy what is right now. Like enjoy life as it is. We're here now and, and it's the only moment that we can make a difference. So let's just, let's just be who we should be right now. I love it, man. Being in the moment, creating yeah. in the moment. You know, I remember, um, again, first meeting you and at a time, you know, in the army, I was kind of like all over the place. And for you, you had this focus about you, which I think is really interesting. You were focused on your songwriting. You were focused on making sure that the relationships that you had in your life were quality relationships. It was a focus that it was just so clear to you. You were not distracted by anything else. Wow. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> mm. um, but, but you just being who you are with that clarity and that simplicity of faith, um, of your talents and you know, as a friend, you, you did become that sanctuary for me in the army and actually for the guys that we are still in contact with. And then, and that, that's something that really impacted me. And, you know, the, maybe that's a thing that you carry forward now, just mm -hmm. you being who you are and creating about what you're passionate about. You know, it has such a massive effect on mm -hmm. so many people around you. You know, a lot of what we're doing today in, in GFJ productions, you know, you help to, to really craft not just in, in the beautiful space that you've created with your design, not just because you made a beautiful office, a studio for us, but also because of that vision that, you know, we, we were in sync. Do you know that that I think made the big difference in, in my life for the past five, six years? Those decisions made us who we are today. I mean, it's an honor to be able to be a part of that, mate. And I think mm -hmm. it's, a, it's even greater honor and joy to do it with a friend. Mm. And, and I feel like maybe that's what a big part of wellness in our industry is as well, is to make sure that you surround yourself with real friends. Yep. That's been very precious to me. And I know, you know what you described just now is, you know, having yeah. people who, who, who are also genuinely passionate about what you're about and mm -hmm. not just what you can bring into their lives in that sense. It's very powerful. Thank you, man. Okay, man. Well, thank you so much. JJ, I mean, um, it has been a great conversation. I know that this conversation will be so useful for people who are creators who want to see a bit more of what it's really like to be creating mm -hmm. this industry. And then mm -hmm. I think that we definitely gave them a little unexpected glimpse into what the future could look like and what is really important. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Ken. Our moment. Mm -hmm.